what exactly is the amendment doing? Because my mom had kind of like a disagreement on like what it actually does. It's permanently banning gay marriage in Minnesota until there's a federal change. So gays will never be allowed to get married ever unless the U.S. government as a whole decides to change it. It's amending the Minnesota Constitution. So like we amend the federal constitution, it's amending the Minnesota Constitution saying marriage is between a man and a woman and only a man and, and a woman. Be. And should be between a man and a woman. But the Supreme Court of the United States might not trump. They might simply say, okay, if states want to do it, fine, but other states don't have to recognize each other's states, in which case the Minnesota Amendment would stay. Because so it could be a very long time before um, gay marriage might be legal in Minnesota. The Bible in itself is contradictory, so you can basically look in the Bible and find whatever you want to support your viewpoint. It's a very reliable resource, actually, for better or for worse. But you can also break down the verses surrounding homosexuality yes. and realize that it it's what people are saying what something not not, not love related and it's not about no. two men or two women that are in love and are in a committed relationship and together this, like, new interpretation of the story of Sodom and Gomorrah it's hospitality issues and mm -hmm. it, unless I'm it's totally no, off based on that it's hospitality not homosexuality issues yeah. and so me I feel like you need to interpret the Bible think don't just be like that's God's word for me today think about what you're reading, interpret it properly, maybe go back and do some Greek and Hebrew translations. Yeah. And like, think, that's how I feel about my Bible. I think part of the connotations that came with it, too, is a lot of the original scriptures came from, you know, groups of people who weren't fans of homosexuality because they were small groups of people with closely concentrated religious beliefs. They wanted those beliefs not to die out, so they wanted to keep making children. And it's harder to make children with homosexual couples than it is with heterosexual couples. Yeah, a lot of different people wrote the Bible, so there's going to be a lot of differing viewpoints in the Bible. The Bible was written a long time ago, and I feel that it was people who wrote it. Um, and things change over time. A lot of things have changed, so people's viewpoints back then will be different than what what we now think now, because everything changes. So I feel that we can't just stick with what they have down in the Bible, but we have to go along with time, just like everything else has. The, uh, the living should not be governed by the dead, especially not those who have been dead for 2,000 years and who have been brought up in an entirely different climate than us. So I think that people uh, using the Bible as an excuse to uh, and uh, dislike homosexuality, uh, it's kind of a, honestly for me, it just seems like a bit of a weak argument. It was really, religious texts, for some reason, are used as weapons now, and that wasn't the way that they were supposed to be. I've been a Lutheran, I've been raised a Lutheran, and I never thought anything was different or anything that was abnormal about two people, like, of the same sex being together. I've known Patrick my whole life, and I never thought anything was weird about his two-mom family until my church left and it really made me think about like what does that mean and what do other people value and I've realized that my biggest thing about why I love God is because God is love and he's supposed to love everybody and to me it doesn't make sense that he loves everybody except the gays. Not to offend but I feel like this is also a racial thing yeah. because to me I see a lot of parallels between civil rights for blacks and civil rights for gay people and I see those connections and I'm like okay I get that.